Hello guys, this is Royal69501 and welcome to my channel. Well, I'm gonna give you my thoughts for my next story arc, uh, which is Night of the Monster Man. Oh yeah. Well, before I start, I'm gonna show you the covers of each one of the comic books that have to, that has to do with this crossover, which happens to be the first crossover on the DC Universe Rebirth on the Batman's family books. So here's part one, Batman issue number seven, which is not bad cover, not bad at all. Part two is Nightwing issue number five, pretty cool also, look at that, not bad. Part three is Detective uh, 941, this is part three, check that out, not bad at all. Batman issue number eight, part four. Not bad at all. Not bad. Nightwing issue number six, part five, which to me this is the best cover from, from this whole crossover. And chapter six, which is Detective issue 942. Not bad at all. Uh, so Okay, so I'm gonna give you my thoughts. Okay, the whole thing goes that the story starts that somebody went to James Gordon's office and he just ripped or cut his crow out. He just killed himself. And before he died, he's, he's told uh, James Gordon the monster men are coming. Whatever that means at that moment. So the thing is that at the morgue, as we can see here, you know, those dead people begin to come comes to life. Not as zombies, but they kind of like, they mutate into some ugly monsters and the whole issue goes at least half of it goes through the Batman fi uh, family fighting against those monsters so not only that that when I was reading this book I stumbled to on this panel actually it's a full page one of those monsters that reminds me of that anime movie I think it's called Akira not because it might look like one of the monsters of the movie, but kind of reminds me of Akira. And I'm talking about this page here. It reminds me a lot of Akira. Look at that. I don't know, it just... For some reason, it reminds me of the movie, animated movie, anime, Akira. So anyway, back to the story. Now how to say that the art is pretty cool. It's kind of like a scruffy looking, you know, it's not like a straight lines. The colors are, are great. Actually, it fits to the story, to the tone of the story. So the thing is that few things going on on this story. First of all, there's a, a big hurricane. That is going to hit Gotham City. Kind of the same one as on the, on the cellular year of the New 52. <coughs> Excuse me. So everybody's scrum. They are trying to uh, to take people to to a safety zone and all that. So half of the issue, half of these, the first three comic books goes around that because at the beginning when I was reading, I was like, okay, there's some monsters, and now the monster that one of them turn it turn into into kind of like a like a giant monster, like a kaiju, I think it's called. Let me see, I can find the page right here. Which, to be honest with you, to be, be honest with you, is pretty cool monster there. Look at that. Uh -huh. So, there's a giant kaiju. Kaiju, I think it's pronounced correctly. So, every time that that monster gets attacked, it will grow another head, one under the other. 
Although that must has a long, long neck, so I guess it would fit a five or six head on the other. <laughs> so it's gonna be tough to eat. <laughs> the thing is, as we can see here, you know, so the whole thing goes around there. While they're fighting, the only one that came out, uh, so on the back cave, we see Alfred and the new Robin, or the, or the new bad guy, I forgot his name, uh, trying to work out where they come from, why, how we can stop them. The thing is that another one came up with the with idea, yeah. The thing is that it's a big fight. So the story is divided in three. One, well, of, obviously, uh, Batman, Nightwing, and Batwoman woman are fighting the creatures. Alfred and the other guy, they're on the back cave. And spoiler, and the mute Robin, uh, that girl was, uh, Cassandra Kane are taking the civilians to safest, uh, safe place because of the hurricane and the monster. So, I mean, I think this is a bad, uh, this is not a good time of the year to go to Gotham City <laughs> at all. <laughs> so the thing is that I have to say that love Batwoman's motorcycle. Here we go again. Reminds me a little bit of Akira. Movie, that is. Check that out. Awesome, awesome motorcycle. So the thing is that the whole story goes fighting. Now, like I was saying, once I start reading this story art, I find the story to be a little bit slow. Kind of like, okay, we see Batman, I mean, the Batman family fighting monsters. Okay, what's the big deal of it? Why they transform into, into monsters? Why they are monsters? And the part where I, where I told you that this kaju kind of like grow one head under the other, well, it is right there. Right now he has five heads. Look at that. Awesome. Now I have, to, I have to say that I like the design on the monsters. So the thing is that the first few issues goes like that. He wasn't that excited at all. At least to me though. Now don't get this bad because now oh now when you get to part four, which is this one. Is when the story picks up. Real nice. Here we get to find out that the one who created that that zero, that draw, it was done by Hugo Strange. The thing is that Hugo Strange got that uh, venom from Bane in the island of Santa Prisca. Now, what Bane did that, we don't know. We get to find out also why Hugo Strange. He's doing what he's doing, or why he's he's doing what he did. We're going to find out the reason why. The thing is that Hugo Strange, each dead body was at the morgue that kind of like survived or went back to life. Well, the thing is that he's a psychiatrist. So he was interviewing each of those uh, that those each one of those persons before they, they were dead, obviously. So each one of them has an issue. One of them, one of them, it was kind of like have childish, child syndrome kind of. The other one is about fear. The other one was about ego. The other one was different aspect of human beings' fault, kind of. The thing is that. Hugo Strange was doing that because he wants to become Batman. But he created those monsters based on Batman. Even though that he doesn't know that Batman and Bruce Wayne are the same person, which to me, once I read the story, kind of made me feel like Hugo Strange knows that Bruce Wayne and Batman are the same person. Although Hugo Strange is a psychiatrist or psychologist. So he kind of like he figured out that himself. So he wants to go. So it kind of reminds me of Nightfall. 
in a way, well, he created those monsters, and he wants to bam and figure out who created those monsters and kind of like make him get tired. So once that he confronts Batman, well, Batman will be tired as hell. So we'll go, it's, it's not going to be able to fight back. Not only that, on the Batcave, we see Gotham Girl. You know, she was she was passed out because from the previous story arc where her brother died, which I'm going to make a video about. So the thing is that she finally wake up and she see what's going on. And she said, well, and we know that every time, every time that she used her power, she will kind of like a, like a level. Every time that she used her power, her power level will go down up to that she died. Supposed to. Which, to be honest with you, I would not, I would not like to see Cotton Girl die. Because even though that she has a short uh, appearance on the first story arc. It was more about her brother than, than to her. But I kind of like her. She, she uh, got on, got on her kind of like grow on me a, a little bit. So I kind of like that character more than her brother. So I would not like to see her die or lose her power uh, forever. So, well, I mean, this is just me talking about it. Like, that just depend off that just depends on the writers. So back to the story. Here. So Go Gotham Girl, she goes to Gotham City. And she saved Nightwing. And she and she went to Blackgate, where there are a bunch of little creatures. That's another monster that kind of like reminds me of the Queen Alien from the movie Aliens. It reminds me a little bit. So there is kind of like a giant mantis with with a, with a big uh, tail. So the thing is that they're fighting, and Nightwing tried to stop her. Said, "Look, you don't know what you're getting into here." And we get to have kind of like a kind of like a, of of a reminders reminder of what happened in the previous story arc of the Batman book. With Gotham girl, girl, she said, "Look, I was a, uh, I was controlled by by uh, scarecrow, a scarecrow uh, fear toxin. I'm tired. I'm tired to be afraid. My brother died, Tim Drake died, and I'm tired of that. So I'm gonna kill you." She kind of like lost her mind, and she started finding all those little, little baby monsters until so she get to the big queen, whatever, and she actually kills her. Kills her or him. The thing is that once that they kill her or him, the thing is that Gotham Girl and Nightwing they get contaminated by monsters' blood, so they turn themselves into into monster also. Believe it or not. So I'm gonna show you a picture about them when they turn into monster, uh, which was awesome. Let me see if I can find it here. Which it was really good. Yeah, I really like it. Let me see if I can find it here real fast. Ha! Ah, here they are. There is Gotham Girl and Nightwing. Not only that, the, 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 I like how Batman used Clayface. You see, uh, Clayface, he's, he's weak against uh, to water. Because he kind of like make him more soft. So Batman gives him kind of like a pill. He said, look, this will help you not to fall apart because of the water. Because there's a hurricane coming on his way. And it's raining. So Clayface, he don't, cannot use his power the way he wants to use it because of, because of the water. So Batman gives him that pill. Magic pill. Here, take it and drink it. And you're going to be okay. So... <laughs> So, the other monsters, once the one on the Black Gate, kind of like turned, kind of like, a, if they were kind of like a shadow, kind of reminds me of a story arc from the New 52 of the Superman when he was fighting some dark, uh, dark, dark matter, kind of kind of like a liquid, black, uh, whatever. 
there is a specific name, but right now I do, I do not remember. So, the thing is that each month's monster that is dying is going back to the main monster, which is one I showed you in the beginning of the video, which reminds me of Akira, the one that has a big eye with just one eyeball on the middle. Of it. That's the one. Kind of like they have a mind of their own. So, back in the back cave, we see the, the new bad guy, which I forgot his name. I'm sorry, I know. Hey, it's Monday. So he kind of like, he created a vaccine. Which I'm surprised that, since he's not as smart as Tim Drake, by the way, that, <coughs> excuse me, that some of you might know that Tim Drake died. Not died for us readers, he's not dead. But he's dead for the rest of the DC universe. Because he was transported to some other place, dimension or planet or whatever. So, which in a way is good for us. Kind of doesn't look like they are repeating the, the story again. So, So the new bad guy, he goes to Gotham City to fight the monster because he believes he has a cure. And he uses it on Gotham Girl, which a Gotham, a Gotham Girl, she actually recovers. And then from there we, we move to Batwoman, which is fighting Nightwing. I mean, a big ass fight. Look at that, this is Nightwing. Awesome. And we're gonna see Bat, Batwoman fighting Nightwing. Look at that, I mean, there's a lot of action here, but this comic book, this comic book, this story arc reminds me, it has a little bit of Nightfall, uh, Contagion, and a little bit of touch of uh, Cataclysm. That reminds me, you take those three story arcs from the 90s, put them together, and, and this story arc, the Night of the Monster Man, reminds me of that except for the monster, but when it comes to the virus, reminds me of Contagion, uh, the storm and the building for this, uh, folding down, all that destruction reminds me of Cataclysm, and the way Hugo Strange is using how to get Batman attention reminds me of Nightfall, in a way, a little bit, which is good, I'm not complaining. So. Finally, so the only one that can actually give the vaccine to Nightwing is Gotham Girl, as we can see here. And she finally, she injected Nightwing with the vaccine and, and, and the vaccine works and Nightwing becomes Nightwing. Now, remember when I told you about that dark matter, whatever? Well, once all that dark matter from, from the Black Gate united together, it becomes another monster, which a giant monster, which is this one here. I know a lot of monsters. The thing is, there are five five monsters on this story. Each monster represents one aspect of Batman: fear, ego. Uh, the other one was a uh, child. Uh, the other one was, I think, insecurities, and the other one don't quite remember. But basically, does each monster with represent one aspect, uh, psychology-wise, of Batman. That's what, at least that's what Hugo Strange believed. Because Hugo Strange is trying to break Batman psycho uh, psychology-wise. He wants, he's playing with Batman's mind because he wants to break him. It's more easier to, to kill Batman, but we, we know that the bad guys are like, they're not going to do that. So, Hugo Strange decides to break him down. Spiritually, he wants to break him down. And mentally also. So here, we get to see that when Nightwing access to the video feed of Hugo Strange interviewing each of those dead bodies that were back at the morgue. So each one of them is, is, one of them is a manipulator. The other one is fear. The other one is grief. The other one is child. So actually there are four, four or five. So that's how Hugo Strange 
figure out Batman, how might Batman be behind the mask, which he got close. Uh, so, and then after that we see that they keep on fighting, so here we get to see that the Batman activates the Wayne Towers. Each tower belongs to one member of the Batman family, Batwoman, Nightwing, uh, Spoiler, and the, and the other one. Well, Cassandra came, if I'm not mistaken. The thing is that uh, we can see here now all those monsters that they already killed, their blood or whatever, is they're just traveling to meet the Akira monster, which I'm gonna call him that way because it reminds me of Akira. Uh, if I sound a little bit uh, not too clear because I still have, still have. Although I'm still getting better from a cold that I had. Really bad one, by the way. So, as you can see here. And once that all those blood monst dead monsters, blood or whatever, they get together, they transform again into one giant Godzilla. Kind of. Look at that. Okay, so while they are fighting, Nightwing uh, figure out that Hugo Strange did it. So Batman decides to confront Hugo Strange. So he goes where Hugo Strange is and they start talking. The thing is that Batman figured, he already figured out what Hugo Strange, Hugo Strange was after. Look at that. Awesome, huh? Look at that. The, so, while everybody is fighting the giant monster, Nightwing figure out because while while everybody is fighting the giant monster from each one of them, Wayne Tower, which by the way, Bruce Wayne built those after Dark Side War, Dark Side War, which is good in a way that it makes uh, this river connected with the New Fifty Two. In a way, so. While they are fighting, Nightwing still thinking on his mind, okay, fear, uh, manipulation, uh, ego, what all that means. So once that Nightwing figure out, he leaves his post and he goes after Batman. Batman already went to Hugo Strange hiding or hideout. And we see Hugo Strange sitting on his throne, really, really like, you know, like, I own the world, but his crown is made out of books, as you can see here. Look at that, and has the Batman symbol on on his wall. Look at that. You see, because he wants to be the he wants to be the new Batman because he believes he's better Batman than Bruce Wayne because Hugo Strange believed that well, since since I'm uh, since I'm a psychiatrist or psychologist. I can do better job than Bruce Wayne. So he believes that Batman having all that because it seems like Hugo Strange is being uh, keeping an eye on Batman for a long time for him to come up with his conclusion that Batman has four faults: fear, manipulation, so on and so forth. The thing is that well, Batman has those faults. The thing is that well Batman used that, which I will explain later. Now back to Nightwing. So Nightwing take the kind of like the antidote and just run top of a cable and jumps right into the monster's mouth. Oh wait a minute. Here is uh, here is Nightwing running. And then he decides to, to jump into the dragon's mouth. Look at it. Awesome, huh? And then after that, well, the monster, the monster get destroyed and that wing survive and everything's fine. Right. Now we go back to Batman and Hugo Strange, which is the best part of this whole story. So the thing is that Hugo Strange says, look, you cannot touch me. That's it. 
I mean, you can do whatever you want, but you cannot touch me because if you punch me or hit me as hard as a football, well, I will die. I will explode. And I know that since you don't kill, well, you know, you have to put up with me. <laughs> so he has that, you know, Hugo Strange has that uh, self center. Uh, I don't know how to explain it, but he's like, uh, he's, he, he acts like he's God gifted to mankind kind of attitude, which it was fun. So, you know, so Batman says, keep talking. And, he, uh, and, and Hugo Strange, keep talking garbage. And you can touch me. And you can, you know, I can do this and you cannot touch me. It reminds me of the sound of, of a song. Uh, from the 90s, uh, MC Hammer, you can touch this. So, <laughs> so Hugo Strange keeps talking, 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 and Batman says, well, keep talking. Oh, believe me. So he's, Hugo Strange is pushing Bas Batman's buttons, make Batman to lose, to lose his temper. So that way Batman will punch Hugo Strange and they both die. Which I don't know why Hugo Strange wants to become Batman if he's taking a risk to to die also. Although the thing is, which I believe is that Hugo Strange did that because he knew that Batman would not touch him. Because Hugo Strange, like I said before, wants to, to break Batman. Not physically, mentally and spiritually. So, well, all that's going on outside of the building, which I did not know that Clayface can do that. So Clayface is kind of like he spent himself and cover half of the building. So that way there will be no, as you can see here, no oxygen coming in into the room where Hugo Strange is with Batman. So Batman all this time, he's holding his breath. And even though, uh, <laughs> which I find it funny, Clayface, he's, she tells Batman, look, I didn't know, I did not know that you can hold your breath this long. And Batman says, well, I can hold it, I can hold it longer than Hugo Strange. Until Hugo Strange, lack of oxygen, oxygen, he just passed out. So actually, and Batman says really, really cocky. He says, well, I never said it. I said I was, no, I was not going to touch him. But he beat him without touching him because he used clay face to block the oxygen inside the room. It kind of like cover the whole building. So there, there is no oxygen coming in. So, which, I don't know if the building has air conditioner, but I guess, uh, I don't know. So, hey, it's coming with magic. <laughs> So the thing is that Hugo Strange passed out. And I like and it was nice to see the Justice League, as we can see here, going to Gotham City, trying to help clean up all the debris and saving people and rebuilding and all that. The thing is that Nightwing at the end he says, look, Hugo Strange was right. He has all Batman has all those faults. But he got it all wrong. You see, Batman do not feel bad having those faults. Batman feed out of those faults that he has. Ego and all that. It's kind of like that's his, uh, his fuel that make him do what he does. See where I'm going? Hugo Strange was right from the beginning. Batman has all those faults, but Batman doesn't use. So Batman doesn't feel weak by having those those faults. That's his fuel to make him do what he's doing or what he's been doing all this time. Fighting crime and jumping on buildings and all that. So at the end of it, fighting the monster was simple. But they asked, but the story, at least the part of the Hugo Strange, it was fun. I really like it. The thing is that on the end, uh, 
Batman decides to go to, he would decide to go to Santa Prisca because he knows that that drug came, that venom came from venom, from Bane, and Bane is on Santa Prisca, which I haven't started really, uh, reading it yet. So that's the whole story. The monster part, it was fun. But the best part I liked the most was with the Hugo Sponge, why he was doing it, how he did it. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's about it, guys. I mean, I like, I mean, the, like I said before, the first half of this story arc, this story arc was, it was okay. It, it was, it was not bad. Do not get me wrong. But I would say that it could be better. But hey, I cannot complain. This is the first story arc on Reaper. Which seems like it's going to be like a setup for the next, for the next event, crossover. So overall, it was a fun story, like the art, like the way that the story flows. A little bit slow on the first three issues. Uh, I like the way that they're using Clayface. Uh, the new bad guy, well, he was not too much on the story arc. He was basically more stay on the base, on the base, on, on the base, on the bad cave. Because Batman did not want him do not want to use him because he's worried that we shall forgot his name. Uh, he's gonna he might die the same way that Tim Drake died. That we know that he not die. He did, he did not die. But for the for the DC universe, well, he's dead. So it was fun. I like it. Uh, should I recommend it? Well. To understand a little bit of this story, you have to uh, read the first story arc from Batman. Can I give, give you kind of like a indirect way? Because one thing I'm noticing is that one story arc after the other is it connects. I mean, one that story I finished, but you can tell that it's the beginning for the next. It's not like a story arc stops, and then the next story arc will not be when the new story arc starts. It's not a whole completely different thing. Like one story, a story arc finish of the city, and the next story arc starts on the middle of the desert. Like, like you come up with idea, like okay, how he he came and he came from the city to the desert, and why, why? So here, the way that they're doing of river. One story are finished, the other one starts, but still connected to the one before. I like that. I like that. That little things that DC River are doing. For better or for worse. But so far I've been having fun with all the all the river issues. I've been having fun with. And now I'm gonna choose the best color, which I to already show you, which I told you on the beginning of this video. The best cover goes to Nightwing issue number six. Look at that. So cool cover. Awesome cover. So this story arc, I'm going to give it 4.5 out of 5. Now, remember, when I give it a 3 out of 5, 3 to me, I did not like it. 4 is average. It's good. It's fun. If I give him a 5, well, it's the best of the best. So instead of me going... One out of five, two out of five, and so on and so forth. So just kind of like, let's not complicate things. So I go from three to five. Three, I do not like it. Four, it was good. Five, the best of the best. So this story arc, I'm going to give it 4.5 out of five. Well, guys, this is it. I hope that you like this video. Till later. Bye.